The purpose of this video is to give a general overview in how Behavior Designer works. I'm not going to spend too much time on any one particular feature. I'm instead just going to give a basic overview so you can hit the ground running with Behavior Designer. For these other features, take a look at the videos and documentation sections as that is a lot more focused on the specific topics. So I've already imported Behavior Designer and after you can done importing Behavior Designer, this welcome window will pop up. This welcome window contains links to various resources and then also at the top right here, we can see that uh, it contains a reference to the Behavior Designer Editor. So just click that and it will open up the Behavior Designer Editor. One thing that I highly recommend that you do is take a look at the sample scenes that are included with Behavior Designer. The sample scenes are included within the package, but uh, Behavior Designer uses the packages approach and with that approach, the sample scenes are a separate import. So go ahead and import the samples through this samples dialog. Um, just click import samples. And then what that will do is Unity will create this hierarchy right here. And then the samples folder are, are in this scenes folder. And here are the samples. So I have the conditional boards sample open right now. This behavior window also contains some links to the various integrations and add-ons that uh, have been added to Behavior Designer. So let's go ahead and get started. And we let's just say that we have this kind of fresh window layout within Unity. We can open up Behavior Designer in a couple of different ways. One very common way is under Tools Ops of Behavior Designer Editor, and then that will open up the same editor. You can also open up a specific Behavior Tree Editor by clicking on the little Open button on the Behavior Tree component or your subtree. And I'll go ahead and click Open right here. And so we have this uh, Behavior Tree open right now. Now, uh, there are, if you're not familiar with Behavior Trees, I highly recommend that you take a look at the Behavior Tree Basics video as that kind of gives an overview in the flow of how behavior trees work. But behavior trees, they work by uh, executing from top to bottom, left to right. So the first task that will run will be the selector task followed by sequence. This can see object task is contained within a stacked conditional task. And what this allows you to do is to have multiple tasks within the same node. It, it's just great for organization. Um, I could have had this seek task included. Actually, no, I could not have. We have a stacked conditional here, then we have this stacked action. So these are two different task types, but can see object task uh, will run. If the target object can be seen, then the seek task will run. And then if it cannot be seen, it will traverse back up this hierarchy and idle will run. Um, within the task, actually this was a change that I made earlier. Um, what we want to do is we want to have this agent, which is this capsule here, detect if it can see this red cube here. This red cube is gonna move from this position to this little orange dot over here. And I want to have this capsule determine if the enemy can be seen. So in this case, I'm going to set the target to this enemy. The sample scene that you download will already have this target set. All right, so let's say that we want to change this behavior tree a little bit and we can, uh, let's say one of the things that we want to do is instead of just idle playing, we want a log to say that we are going to be playing idle. It's a, a, not a very useful example, but it is an example. So we can do that by uh, clicking the space bar and then you can um, see that this uh, filter window pops up, which contains the various types of nodes that you can add. I want to add the log task, so I'm just gonna type in log, and there we go. Um, we can also get to that same filter window by right-clicking and do create node. Well, now I want to have a sequence task, so I'm gonna type in sequence and then add the sequence task. And now we will have this, this flow where this log statement will run first, followed by the idle statement. Well, the log statement should include some type of log, so I'm going to write plain idle. Now when I hit play, before idle runs, we should see the log in the hierarchy right here. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to pause it right away. 
And now the behavior tree is plain and we can see that we got a log statement because this log task had executed. On the log task, on the top right of the task, we can see that there's this check mark and this indicates that the task returned success. If this task is green, that means it is currently executing. And then we have a red X here, which indicates that the task failed. In this case, the sequence task failed because the can see object task returned a status of failure. You'll notice that this can see object task looks a little bit different because there is an X with a little circle around it. And the reason for that is because of the conditional abort system. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you take a look at how conditional aborts, and I have both documentation and a, a video showing the specifics on conditional aborts, but we have a lower priority conditional abort set here, and you can see that is set here through this abort type, and then this icon right here also indicates lower priority. Uh, because of that lower priority, this can see object task is going to reevaluate. If this conditional abort did not exist, then the can see object task would run once initially and then return failure in our specific case, and then it would not run again. Well, that's not very useful for this behavior tree, so we want can see object task to be reevaluated, um, and that is through this conditional abort system. So let me go ahead and drag the window, and as soon as the object can be seen, we should see that this branch switches over, can see object return success, which then runs the seek task. As soon as, soon as the agent has seeked towards the target, which in this case is that cube, uh, the seek task will return success, which will then kind of propagate up and then eventually return success on this start node. So that's kind of a basic in how the behavior tree works. You can see that this, we already made some changes actually to this, but when you click on a task, you have the editor or the inspector for the specific task. Since in this case, we are working with stacked conditional, and then in this case, it's a stacked action, you can click on this little plus button right here to add multiple tasks to that one specific node. In this case, these nodes here that are green, they are, ex they are green because they are being executed using the ECS system. So these tasks are extremely fast. Um, one of the limitations of ECS is you cannot have references. And so in this specific case, you can't have like stacked conditional multiple of multiple ECS tasks. So when I click on this, it's just the specific sequence inspector. But let's say that this can see object task, instead of directly referencing the enemy, let's instead say that we want to use the variable system so that other tasks or other objects within the scene or the game world can reference and set that same uh, value. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to create a new shared variable right here, and I'm just gonna call this target, and I'm gonna click add. It's gonna be of type game object. Uh, also pay attention right here, or, or note right here at the top, you can change whether it's just a singular reference or a singular uh, array value or a singular value if it's an array value or if it's a list value. So just because I want just a singular game object, I'm just gonna click that game object button. And so now we have this new shared variable of type game object. You can also change the type if you, or rename it if you later wanna do that. Uh, right now I added this target value to the graph uh, of the behavior tree. So if I go ahead and move this over and then I look at my behavior tree component, you can see the same target variable was set. So that has been added to the graph. I can also add the variables to a game object or to a scene or to a project. For the game object and the scene, it will create separate components either on the game object or the scene. The project will create a scriptable reference or a scriptable object to the shared variables that are have a project scope. The one thing with this uh, project scope is that Unity cannot reference scene objects within a project level asset. So for example, I could not reference, um, actually let me go ahead and set it. So I'm gonna set the enemy to this value right here. Um, so on the project level, if I had set this, I would have gotten an error because the enemy is contained within the scene and the scene cannot 
uh, be referenced by, or objects within the scene cannot be referenced by project level assets just because the scene can change whereas the project kind of persists uh, throughout the project. So I have set this enemy value. Now I just want to set the same value here and I'm just gonna do it like that. And so now we should actually get the exact same results as before, but we are now using the same, the shared variable system. So I'm going to hit play just to kind of verify that the scene actually does work still. And so the agent is, okay, yeah, perfect. So. The agent still saw the target because the target is still set, the, set to the enemy. So we, we basically got the exact same results using the shared variable system. The behavior designer editor, it contains an error window checker tool where if there are any kind of specific errors that behavior designer can recognize, you will be able to kind of see it within the scene. So one common error or one, one error that I know will trigger right away is if you have this start branch, but you don't have anything connected to it. Well, you, you can see I got one error and then this error window will pop up basically saying no task is connected to the start node. Um, and then, yeah, so that you'll, you can kind of debug from there. Um, another case would be, let's just say that this sequence task, if it was connected, but there were no references to it, then yeah, you can, you, you'll get an error. So. So yeah, the, the, shared, the error window is a great way to kind of allow you to quickly find problems. The last thing that I want to show in this video are subtrees. So in this case, this behavior tree right here, it exists on the actual game object. Um, it is the behavior tree component. But for example, let me go ahead and open up a different scene. This, uh, let's see, what would be one, a good one? Let's see, subtrees, yeah, that's, it's obvious. Um, so here on this Atlas game object, you'll notice that here I have this subtree variable set and I can click on it and here is a uh, scriptable object of, of uh, the, that contains the behavior tree. So I have clicked on that and now within the behavior tree, this is what this specific subtree looks like. You can also contain, have subtrees contained within other subtrees. So in this, this scene, we have this subtree reference task and this subtree reference task references another subtree, which is a subtree craft uh, scriptable object. And then if I look at that, that it looks like this tree. So, so yeah, the subtrees are a great way to kind of reuse existing behavior trees across various uh, or multiple objects. And that, that was pretty much an overview on how Behavior Design works. There are many, many, many features included within what I just went over, but I think this will allow you to kind of hit the ground running. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you take a look at the sample scenes because the samples contain a wide variety of different use cases within Behavior Designer.